Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video on the Audi S1. In this video, we're going to take a good look at where that water leak is coming from by taking off this front slam panel. Now if we look, in one of the last videos, I repaired the oil sump because it was leaking. There's no oil on the floor no more, just water. So we're nearly there with these repairs and then we can start rebuilding this car. So that's quite a bad little water leak we got. Seems to be coming down the front of the engine. I can't see from this side. It's probably coming from in the front there. But because this slam panel is damaged anyway, yeah, it's gonna come off. I'm hoping I can repair that because when I've looked, these are very hard to get for this type of car. So if I can repair that, it's only, it's only a support for the intercooler. So it's not really a major structural part of the car. All the top end and this bit all holds it in. This is just like a bracket for the intercooler. And it, it, the only thing that's bolted to it is the own. So I'm not too bothered if we can repair this, all the better. But in, like I said, in this video, we're gonna strip down the front end and try and stop this from leaking, sort that out, start putting the car back together. Now this car is a category N. If you haven't seen this car on the channel, go back and watch the playlist. I've still got the wheel hub, which is on order to get that, uh, the wheel straight. I've got a bonnet there, I've got a door there, I've got a bumper that's on top of the roof. I removed the old bumper, so we, and we've got a wing at the back there somewhere as well. I'm getting there slowly with the parts. I've already replaced the washer bottle. Repaired all the wires, so that's all done. Uh, I'm in the process of trying to order the pipe that goes along there and into the headlight washer jets. Slowly getting there with that. Let's take this front end off and do some of these pipes and hopefully we can be able to spot where this water leak is. I didn't want to be doing this, but ultimately this has been leaking for a good while, same as the oil leak. Uh, I took a gamble because I was going to replace the sump on this car, but after looking at it closely, you could see it was leaking from the seals. So that would have cost £270 altogether, and it's only cost me £70 instead. So that was a bit of money saved there by taking a gamble with this plastic sump. I, ideally, I would like to upgrade and put a, a steel one on there, but it don't matter, that's sorted. And then, like, I've already changed the oil, changed the, uh, the oil filter, but later on, we'll change the air filter, carbon filter, and they would have had a service then. Before I crack on, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, follow me on reviving underscore salvage on Instagram where I post sneak peeks and updates and videos daily so you never miss what I'm getting up to. I think first things first, uh, we'll undo the intercooler. Now we've got a water pipe that's down there, and we see that. I'm going to undo that and hopefully bleed some of the water out that way. So I'll just try and undo that now. I might have to take the front off to give me a little bit more access, because I can't get to nothing. So tight. So I'm going to try just try and undo the front. I'm just going to continue taking stuff off until I get to a place where I can just pull it off. There's a lot of things to undo, guys. So there's no point in me trying to film it all. It's an absolute nightmare, in fact. It's just got to be done, I suppose.
Now can you see? That was the aim, is to get it down enough so I could get behind it to have a good look at what's leaking. Right, just have a look together. I'm hoping uh, we can still remove that into cooler and we can still fix our side. It's not broken underneath, so it's only cracked at the top, so we can re we can fix that. Let's see if we can get in now and see where that water leak's coming from. Uh, I see water there. It's leaking down from up here somewhere. Because you can't bloody see anything. It's definitely leaking. Like if I turn the light on, you might reflect the water. See the water? There. It's quite a lot there, guys. You just uh, can't really see it. See that? Um, I've been looking for a long time. If I undo this pipe here, this bit of pipe here, we might be able to get a good view and see where that is leaking from, hopefully. That is stuck fast, guys. I know it's got to be tight, but bloody hell. I think the only way around there, oh, I'm going to have to think of this in a minute. I think it'll probably be best if I take this front off and drain the water. Now I can get to everything. But I can get to that pipe there. That pop off, that will pop off. This front will come off out the way. Well, come out the way sideways. Because obviously these, the, it'll still be connected. I'll take that, I think it's the, was it the charge pipe, perhaps it's, well, it's to do with the intercooler. So I'll take that out by undoing it all up there and it'll give me a bit more room to manoeuvre it then. We hopefully can have some access to see what, what's leaking. Uh, right, it's draining this fluid now. I'm just undone the bottle so it'll all drain out now. We'll put new antifreeze in. It'll probably do it good anyway. Okay, with that out of the way, I can get to these bolts here that hold this pipe on, and hopefully that'll give me enough room then to manoeuvre it around. I can do these. Now I've removed that. Is that what it's leaking from, guys? It's running down there, running across there, down uh, by the sump. So it's 
destroy that side. It looks like a, th it's a thermostat in there. Why is it? Why is that hole there then? What's that there for? That looks a real awkward part to get to as well. I think I'm going to have to undo some more pipes. Looks like you've got... Oh, this is not good guys. Right, you got... Screw there, screw there, screw there. One there. I'm trying to do it without taking the, the manifold off, hopefully. I think we're going to have to take these water pipes out first. Take as much of these pipes out as possible. So we can have good access to what well, this is. Well, it definitely looks like the, I would say it's a thermostat. That's where all the water goes to. Could be a water pump. But it's been leaking a long time. Hopefully we can cure that. But that's been dripping like that for a while. The only consolation you got a part number there, so I'm going to have a little look now to see what part that is. Not good guys, it's a water pump. It's a water pump and thermostat. Looks like it's one complete unit. And I don't know what the purpose of our hole is. I don't know. Unless it's the seal inside is gone. But you're looking at £200 plus for a new genuine part. So that's not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully try and care this out. I'll undo all the clips. All yours is, I can only see, I can see four bolts holding it in and we'll try and get it out so we'll have a good look at it. Typical law. All this, and it's not even the damage that I was supposed to be fixing. This is what happens when you have salvage cars. I say it every time. You are dealing with other problems. I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I would never sell a car, like I say, with problems. I could just ignore that oil leak, could ignore the water leak, put it all back together, boom. Oh, I didn't know about that, and just leave it. Because you got under the train there, you wouldn't have seen it, it was that small, you wouldn't have noticed it for a long time. I'm not about that, guys. You should know that by now. And we fix things, no matter the cost. So I'm in a bit of a state now, that radiator is like that. This, I'm not bothered about this. This, as you can see, that intercooler pipe is broke there. See that? I think I've got an intercooler from that. From when I done Audi A1 project, I bought all them parts and it was an intercooler that come with it. I don't know if I still got it. I hope so, because I think it might be the right size. Bloody hell, Luxy. But this, it's not the supporting part of it. This is just a case of just plastic welding it back into place there. Because it only protects the intercooler. The, the actual supportive part, all the metal pieces are up here. So that's fine. This is just to cover that, like that. So I'm not, but it's not, if it was snapped down here and it was hanging off, then fair enough, but it, it's not. So we can fix that guys, that's not a problem. They're like 400 pound plus for this, just for that little split there. No, not gonna happen. I can't fix everything, so. Oh, I can't believe that intercooler though. That's not good, is it? Anyway, let's focus on this first. So all I'm doing is moving pipes out the way so we can have, try and have some sort of access to this. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh. 
scrap that there's actually five bolts in there I can see so one uh, one two three four five three at the top this is the bloody hardest one <clears throat> only because I've got nothing long enough oh, yes I managed to find this hopefully this can get through a very small gap little by it flexes as well so a drill it is but adapting it you gotta adapt okay here it comes then so please okay I think looking at it I think there is a small pelt that drives this. I'm not 100%, but something stopping it from coming out. So I'm gonna undo these screws here that I can get to and see if it can show me anything at all. What a bloody nightmare. It's lucky really that I could do it from here and not at the top. Just seen it now, it's definitely belt driven. So we've got to get that belt off. Belt's in there. There's a, there's a bolt there, it just will not undo. All this for friggin' water leak, guys. You can see it's been leaking because that was an absolute nightmare to get out. Lucky, because it was nearly uh, going like the threads. Very lucky on that one. Very lucky. So we know now, I know how to do it for next time. That cover sits over the top of it like that. Like that, so you're gonna have to try and get the cover off first. I think I broke that, which is, a repairable part looking at it then almost really but it was leaking from there I don't know I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on this guys I can't believe that snapped off that's that bit there but it looks like it's just gaskets that go on them so that's okay but what a bloody nightmare to get that out of there Don't know whether it'd be easier to come from the top or the bottom. I, I just don't honestly don't know, but that is just stupid. Shall we replace that belt? It looks fine though, to be fair. I don't know, I'll have to look to see if he recommends changing that belt. I would have thought so. Okay, enough, we can change that. I would say something's failed in there. Okay, it's now like a couple of days later. I've done a bit of research on this water pump which I've got here, uh, and as you can see this is a G. Now what I've gone in and done my research on these, these are very common to fail, and they fail on the housing itself, because it's plastic. Uh, mine was leaking from inside there, and leaking down, 
but they fail and it's quite common. Now, I could have just gone and bought a cheap model, but because the, the car has got a different turbine water pump to the normal one, I have to make sure I got the right uh, spec for the car. And now I've got the upgraded one from Volkswagen because they've changed them so many times. From Audi. So this one looks more or less the same. Look at that, looks more or less the same, but this is a P. So the letters correspond to how many times it's been uh, upgraded or changed because of the issues. Now I've also got a water pump as well because that's separate. That comes separate as well. And on the newer ones, they're not plastic like this. This is plastic. Uh, it's I've got it here. a metal version. So obviously they knew they've had problems. Yeah, so obviously that's a big difference to that one. Obviously that 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 yellow is protecting the fins on the pump, and there is the um, the inside. I also bought these, which go on to this. Yeah, this separates the oil cooler and stops it from leaking there. So that goes in there like that. I've got new seals for that. Now I could have gone down the lines of replacing the seals, replacing this, and go, you know, chucking it back on, but it probably would have leaked, because you don't know where it's leaking from inside. So after seeing that they have crop pro uh, problems with them, I didn't even want to bother. So I've tracked down the torque settings for this. So I'll screw onto there. So already got the gasket in place. Just bolt that to there and then it'll bolt onto you. Now I did go to the garage and ask for a new belt, which I did. I had it, it was £20. Uh, but the bolt inside is uh, one time use, so I wanted needed one to replace it. He didn't have any in stock, the one he was coming up on the screen was totally different. So I didn't even want to go down the lines of trying to wait for one. Yeah, if you look at the belt, it is nothing wrong with it. Obviously, this pump has failed. I say not even the pump has failed, but it's leaking uh, from the housing and not the pump. I'm replacing the pump and not the belt. It's only done 56,000 miles, so it's probably nothing for one of these. And that belt is not cracked, split, nothing. It looks fairly new, so I'm not even going to bother. Because I would imagine that pump would probably fail. The housing will probably fail again before that belt does. And as you can see, it's been leaking. A good while but what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna clean up this head here clean all this up to make sure we've got a good surface I have seen videos on how to do this looking at it more often than not they take the manifold off and come through the top with the front still on but you've got to take the manifold out you've got a lot of fuel pipes to remove and access is really bad ultimately I would say the best way is taking the front off uh, time wise so it's not a good job either way and you're talking over a thousand pound at uh, Audi or Volkswagen to do this job so it's not a cheap job either but obviously because I'm doing it myself I'm going to save an absolute fortune and I could have left a leak obviously when you come to sell a car with a, with a water leak or oil leak it doesn't look good guys is it and I want uh, peace of mind that the car is going to be sound uh, this was big enough 429 pound so not cheap but ideally, you know, I didn't want to be doing this. This is the trouble when you buy salvage cars. You could end up doing other things like I always seem to be doing. Let's clean this up now, ready to receive the new pump so we can get the pump back in and we can start fitting things back. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to forget where things are gone. I've taken so many pipes and wires and stuff off. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. But what I made a mistake is an absolute fool pulling this I didn't obviously when I first started taking it off I didn't realize it was belt driven so trying to yank the thing out without realizing it had a belt so that was a stupid stupid uh, thing of mine to be doing but there you are I am damaged anything lucky enough
Okay, I wanted to show you this. This, this bit here. <clears throat> I've got the torque settings for this. I'll put the torque settings in the, in the video now. But this is, you tighten it up. One, two, three, four. And it's nine newton meters for these. Still doing a bit of research. So all I'll do is hand tighten them. So far. That's already set on nine. This bit is the bit that goes into the oil cooler, so I got two new seals for that. Ready to go. So I'm just putting a little bit of antifreeze on there. Okay, here we go. That's got to sit right in there, otherwise it'll leak. Okay, that's in, but it's the same principle with this. The uh, torque settings for this as well, I'll put it on the screen. Okay, that would be one, two, three, four, five, and they're all nine newton meters. Okay, everything has been torqued up on this part. Nine newton meters in direction. The only one I couldn't talk up to the right settings, but done it as tight as I possibly could without damaging anything, is that one, because I can't get anything down there. So hopefully we won't have any issues with the leaks. Now we've got to try and get this belt back on, which isn't easy trick is to turn over the engine as you're turning it over it'll go on so I'm gonna do that now okay what I'm gonna do is I put this on the, the crank pulley turn the engine over that way that will turn that belt and that will help me get it on I don't want to damage anything you probably can't see much but I want to show you that see that now the belt is now turned and gone on that's so all I gotta do is turn it a couple more times now and that will should Feed yourself on. There. Let's make sure that's on. Good stuff, that's on. Now for the case. As you can imagine, space is really tight.
Okay, that's a nightmare because you've got to wrestle it past the sensor. That's down there. See that? See it down there? So you've got to try and wrestle this case behind there. So that's on now. We've got one bolt there and one on the top to put on. Case is all on. It's all tidy to there now. and solid. It's just a case of refitting everything and putting all the cables back the way they were. And once all the wiring is back and we're ready to put the pipes back on, I'll cut back in then. All back in, all clipped up. This is the hardest part now, remembering when everything goes. So that's all done. I'm just about to start putting the pipes back on. So that is a tiny, tiny little bit of grease. Just a help. Put uh, the pipes back on. Really, I've got to wait for the click for them, guys. wondering where this one went but this one goes up into the pump yeah that one goes up inside there i was lucky okay that didn't take uh, very long after all back together i gotta be honest if i was going to tackle this job on someone's car and they said that I wouldn't want to take all the manifold off to get to that so definitely where I've accessed it is probably the better option you probably have to drain the whole fluid anyway because it's part of the thermostat and things so access for that is ridiculous okay so that's replacing the water pump thermostat and hopefully cure it out leak fingers crossed now if you look on the floor there's an LMS. mess we're gonna hopefully try and fix that into cooler fix that slam surround so it's all sorted, put it all back on, bleed the system and get the car running and check for leaks. Then we can finally put the rest of this car back together and start actually doing the work that we were supposed to do with the bonnet, the wing, the door, the bumper, put it all on, get it down and also the hub, I've got a new hub as well. So I've got all the parts, they're all dotted around the place. So we can get this car down on its, uh, on its wheels get it out as well and hopefully take it for a wash and then it can go off to the paint shop but we've done the most important part we've changed the oil fixed the, the oil leak and hopefully fixed the water leak it is literally the next day it got dark really quick so i still haven't wired up lights in here but uh, there's no way i could have left it the way the video was so decided to carry on and actually film it to the end so I'll explain what I've done off camera and you'll have a gist of what's, uh, what's happening next. There's Everything is back on down there, all the pipes are pipe plumbed up, everything's back on, all the wires are supposed to be where they are. Now if you look, the slam panel is back in place but not attached because obviously I want to see for any leaks. I have fixed off camera, I, I, I just didn't want to drag this, drag this out. This is all welded back on solid so that's all fixed i've got to bend that into shape that can go back on that intercooler is all sealed up 
so hopefully there'll be no more issues so that's all sorted so i've saved a couple of quid there because these are really expensive that is solid that's not going nowhere like i said it was only uh just to protect the front of the the intercooler anyway so before we go for a start up i want to make sure all the wires and cables are out of the way and then we can bolt the front back on i just want to make sure i've plumbed in everything let me see that i got this down here to plug in and we've got to fill it up with water so it's quite a little bit left to do and then we can actually get to the part where we were supposed to do is start putting some new parts on this car. But I'm just going to recheck everything now and then I'll set you up and then we can get some coolant in this thing. Then. run out of water now so I'm gonna go and get some more and come back yeah as you can see guess who's back it's uh, the Mini Cooper sidewalk they brought it back only for me to help them there's nothing that I've done with it or anything but they're having a few issues and they've asked me to have a look so it's nice to see the old girl back chuck some more anti-freezing yet yeah, and then we'll go for a start up guys as much as it's going to take now until it starts up hopefully there's no leaks guys fingers crossed yeah i've just plugged the battery in because obviously it was off because of the front give it a try But the uh, pipe is rubbing on the belt. Not good, guys, not good. Sit down there. Can you see that? It's just nicking the belt. Yeah, I just want to show you that quick. I've just gone in now. It's j it was just faintly rubbing on it I can't really see it on there it's just faintly rubbing on the on the belt that's where the noise was no problem though we've sorted it now hopefully nothing else will be in, in the way let's try again sounds a bit better now Iron sleeve off. Bleed. I'll cut back to you once that's finished. Uh, so far, so good. Nothing leaking. It's still bleeding and it's still blowing. Not very warm air at the moment. But, um, keeping an eye on that temperature gauge. See you there. So I'm keeping an eye on that and waiting for this to start being sucked in when that thermostat opens up. But this does take a long time. But she sounds lovely. How quiet that is. Really, really quiet. Needed that oil change. Definitely need that oil change. Now we've got that air filter to do as well and that pollen filter. That's, uh, I'm well happy with that. Just got to keep an eye on that down there. See that? It's not touching it now. But obviously because this is not in place yet. This isn't in place. It's going to look a bit off a minute until we get this bar on. But under there, there's no leaks apart from that water. That's, that was already there. I'm still bleeding it guys, believe it or not. Still waiting for it to warm right up. 
it is slowly warming up that's warming up now it's boiling off inside here which is good temperature gauge is nearly up to operating temperature which is 90 on this in the middle is normally I think where they normally sit at uh, but I want them fans to kick in as soon as them fans kick in I'll be well happy but I'm still waiting for that I think that thermostat still hasn't opened up all the way yet because the pipes are slowly getting warmer so that's something we're getting there slowly guys it's okay it's still holding at 90 now one of our shoes there's no water leaks at all So I'm gonna end, I'm gonna start putting the front back up now because it's not leaking. We know we've sorted that. So I'm gonna turn it off, disconnect the battery and get this bumper back on, not that, the slam panel back on, and hopefully we can get the light surrounds in. Because I've got one for that side as well. And we can perhaps make a start on that. So I just want to get this back on and then I'm gonna call it a day on this video then guys. straight All back on. Whew. Getting there slowly. I'm gonna put the bonnet latch back all back on properly. Uh, just make sure everything's buttoned up properly here, and then in the next episode, we can start rebuilding the front end. So it's taken a while, but we finally done the oil leak and we finally done the water leak. That's all done, and we can finally start rebuilding this Audi S1. I now have most of the parts, if not all of them. And hopefully we should get this car uh, paint shop ready. Hopefully in the next episode. Fingers crossed. Let's see how it goes. But I think it should be a super long one for the next one. I'm trying to get it all done in one. Let me know if you want that. Or do you want me to break it down into smaller, smaller videos. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate all, all the subscribers. All the new ones. All the ones that stuck by me. I really do appreciate that. One more thing to forget if you haven't already and you've just clicked on this video don't forget to subscribe click that notification bell and you won't get to miss an upload every week take care everyone and i'll see you in the next one when we start to rebuild the front end of this audi s1 bye everyone